tonight on Would I Lie to You? Always a fun show, it's Frankie Boyle. Hot from the one show, it's Christine Blakely. And their team captain, Lee Mack. And facing on tonight, he edited The Sun, it's Kelvin McKenzie. He lives with his mum, comedian Jack Whitehall. And their team captain, David Mitchell. And here's your host, Rob Ryder. Good evening and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where liars always prosper. A recent survey revealed that one of the most common lies is how nice to see you, as in the sentence, how nice to see you, Lee. <laughs> Another really common lie is sorry to bother you, as in sorry to bother you, Rob. No, come in, Lee. How nice to see you. <laughs> and last year, a British couple divorced after the husband lied about a relationship with a girl in cyberspace. I met a girl in cyberspace, uh, Glitter Babe 22, and we started chatting eventually ended up having cyber sex. Turns out we had a lot in common in real life. I was the host of Would I Lie to You? And she was a team captain on Would I Lie to You? <laughs> and so to round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sift the fact from the fiction and Christine oh. is first. Christine, please reveal all. Okay. Anton Dubeck and I danced our way out of a parking ticket. <laughs> all right, there we are. Uh, David's team, what do you think? So, the, so the, a traffic warden were about, was about to give you a parking ticket and you did a dance for him but, or her and he said, all right, I'll let you off. But, is that it? That's the gist of the uh, story, uh, yes. Well, where about them this with the... It was outside Harvey Nichols. But, but you can't park outside Harvey Nichols, exactly. That's how she got a ticket. <laughs> we... <laughs> so I exactly love you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Outside Harvey... So whose car was it? It Your... was in his car. Well, Who he has it? a driver. He'd someone had... Oh, right, so his chauffeur. Did he join in with the dance, the no. chauffeur? No, no, he didn't. <laughs> what, 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 what kind of dance was it? It was a little bit of a foxtrot. He's a ballroom guy, you see. And Waltz was my best dance on Strictly, so it was a bit of ballroom. Does Anton de Beck try to dance his way out of every traffic violation? I would say totally. <laughs> was, it, was, it, um, was it an Italian traffic warden who watched what you were doing and went, You are fast, you're furious, you're back, you're forward, you're up, you're... <laughs> I'm doing Bruno Tognoli <laughs> from Strictly Come Dance. Can I say, yeah. I think that you look a bit like the gentleman in question, don't you? The traffic warden? No. <laughs> No, you look like Anton de Beck. I so have been, has been commented on. Why don't you on. demonstrate with Would Rob you how dance the dance with me, went? Anton? Yeah, go on. Go on. Okay. Yeah. It's like right. this. <laughs> it certainly okay. is now. Yes. <laughs> I've got to get quite close to you. Go as close as you We've like. We've got to touch bodies, okay? Oh, something's touching. <laughs> Can I just say that's 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 my phone. <laughs> A little bit of this, I have to stick my head. <laughs> You go the other way. That's no, it. I do not. <laughs> there was a little bit of this, a little bit of waltzing, yeah. but it involves moving your feet. I mean, a little bit like that, but not quite. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. So there we are. Now, what, what do you reckon then, uh, David? What do you think, Kelvin? Uh, I I don't believe a word of it. I don't believe that there is a generous, spirited traffic warden anywhere <laughs> in the world. Jack, what do you think? I think she's saying the truth, because I know when she's being dishonest, because I watch the one show every day. <laughs> and I've seen your face laughing at Adrian Charles's jokes. Uh, <laughs> so I, know I think she's saying the truth. You think she's saying the truth? Yep. And you think she's lying? I do. My instinct is I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? Yeah. OK, Christine. Uh, is it the truth or is it a lie? It is, in fact, a lie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. Uh, Christine and Anton Dubac did not dance their way out of a parking ticket. I mean, no one who saw Christine dance would believe that. Uh, <laughs> if anything, they'd probably increase the fine. <laughs> Jack, 
You're next. Every Christmas, my dad makes the whole family stand up to watch the Queen's speech. Lee's team, what do you think? How many is in your family? Uh, there's uh, two uh, brothers and sisters, and then two parents. You look like you're lying about that. But no, I'm just, <laughs> just trying to remember. So he makes the what? five of you all stand for the Queen's speech. We all stand. Speech. Not we just all... the national anthem at the beginning, the actual The whole speech. speech. So when it goes on, we're all, you know, come on, hurry up, old woman. The, uh, <laughs> the old woman, he doesn't like us referring to her as that either. Right. We stand is that, up is that the only thing on Christmas Day that's got some sort of physical challenge element <laughs> to it? Or do you have to hop through Indiana yeah. Jones? Or? <laughs> <laughs> They're just the standing for the for the Queen's speech. But why why would that be? I mean, I know he's, why he's quite old fashioned. He's living in a kind of like time warp. He's quite an, he's quite an old dad, um, and he's one of those people like he'll buy a spam and sit in the cellar because he misses the Blitz. He's like <laughs> he, he's in, still thinks he's living in a bygone era. How old is he, Jack? Uh, he's sixty nine today, actually. And how old are you? Uh, 20. So, ba so basically, if you're, if you're 20 and your dad's 69, at the point that he conceived you, he must have thought, there is a significant risk that this will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, are you allowed to speak during the, the speech at all, or is it very much, this is 50 minutes of silence? Did you say 50? Did you say 50 minutes of silence? Is that the director's 15. cut? <laughs> <laughs> It's actually, it's ten at most, and they pad it out with music and handshaking. Yeah. In terms of actual facts she's conveying, it's sort of five and a half minutes, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she talks slowly. <laughs> she's bad at it. It's a shit programme. <laughs> did, you, did you see that when the Queen met Obama and then everyone was, that it was amazing, you saw her face just thinking, please don't talk to my husband. <laughs> well, Obama said about the Queen that he thought that she was surprisingly knowledgeable about politics. And she was clearly thinking, Nelson Mandela's looking well. <laughs> so, Lee, what are, you, what, are you, what are you thinking? What do you think, Frankie? Well, it sort of depends on how posh we think he is. I think Jack and is quite posh. He is quite posh, isn't he? He sounds like a Korean man begging for help after a traffic accident. <laughs> He's got that, <laughs> that almost incomprehensible poshness about him. <laughs> Is that what comes poshness to you more than anything else? An yeah. injured Korean. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds to you incredibly posh. <laughs> to be honest, I can't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> do you, Jack, do you get to a point where you're so posh that you do without hairbrushes? <laughs> My dad sometimes in because like, uh, those protest things where they go on the marches and stuff. I did. Uh, the only one I've ever been on was fox hunting, and there were people going around saying, you know, oh, this is a real cause, and you know, there are more names on the pro fox hunting petition than there are on the anti one. But, yeah, because most people that sign it have triple barreled surnames. <laughs> Foxes are the great way to tell class, aren't they? Because if if you see a fox in your back garden, if you're upper class, you get on a horse and chase it. If you're a middle-class person, you get your children to do a picture of it. Maybe send it to Blue Peter. If you're, if you're working class, you beat it to death with a shovel and use it to make soup. <laughs> so, Lee, it's time to come down on one side or the other. So, what do we think? Is he telling the truth? I think, yeah, he's probably telling the truth. Do you think? Yeah. Mm, I think he's posh enough to be telling the truth. Yes, we think he's telling the truth. You, they're saying it's the truth. Jack, are you telling the truth or are you telling them a big lie? It is, I'm going to stand, true. <laughs> true. Every Christmas, Jack's dad does make the whole family stand up to watch the Queen's speech. My father made us stand one Christmas. He'd pawned our sofa to pay his gambling debts. <laughs> Happy Christmas, Dad. A child doesn't forget these things. <laughs> Frankie, you're next. When I was a child, I was scared that my entire life was a book being read by a bear. And one day, <laughs> the bear would close the book and my life would end. <laughs> um, the first question is, what, what on earth made you stop thinking that? I, I grew older and more rational. I thought, you That's know... That's a matter of what opinion. To, what, age? <laughs> <laughs> what, what age were you when this rather peculiar thought came to you? Uh, quite early, but then, you know, up until I was maybe seven or eight. 
I was quite afraid of that. So is it where your interior monologue was in the voice of, of a gruff bear? I thought, I thought that there was a chance <laughs> yeah. that my life was, was a simply a fiction. We've all felt that, haven't we? Bit, yeah, but yeah. Not, in, not in a bear society. <laughs> <laughs> What does the bear look like? Was he like a little cartoony bear or did he look very natural, like a natural bear? He was reading a book, so he didn't look that natural. <laughs> <laughs> it came from a storybook I had, which was called Tell Me Another Story, and it was about a bear reading stories to his little bears. Did you have any, like, relationship with him? Did you converse with him or is he just reading? You can't converse with him. The, the, the bear, he's in the bear's but world. Could you say, <laughs> well, <laughs> junior to the bear. You can't, you can't jump out of the book that is your life and talk to the person reading it, can you? You can't say, why is this happening, bear? No! <laughs> Otherwise, the bear's just going to go, and then, why is this happening, bear, said Frankie Boyer. <laughs> <laughs> bear's going, I don't like this bit of the story. Yeah, I'll stop reading it, shall I? No, 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 screamed Frankie Boyer. Don't stop the story. It's the end of my life. Now, this is definitely not suitable for little bears. <laughs> David, time to uh, make a decision. All right, well, oh, what do you think, Kelvin? I, I think it's a massive whopper. <laughs> I really want it to be true, so I'm going to say true. I think because I think yeah. it could be. I think it's. I think it's true. It's creative mind. I do think it's true because I. It's a very odd thing for them to have made up. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to go for true? Uh, yeah, I think we're going to go you're for true. true. Oh, okay. You're saying true. So you're wrong. Right. You say that it's true, uh, Frankie. Uh, were you telling the truth? Is a lie. Uh, <laughs> it's a lie. When Frankie was a child, he wasn't scared that his entire life was a book being read by a bear. Uh, a Chinese philosopher once asked me, Am I a man dreaming he's a butterfly, or a butterfly dreaming he's a man? And I replied, Do I get free crackers if my order comes to more than ten pounds? <laughs> Our next round is called The Ring of Truth, in which I read out some amazing celebrity facts, and all our teams have to do is decide whether they're true or not. Uh, David's team, take a look at this. At a terraced house in Ramsgate, a family settled down to watch the television, but the pictures on screen are from a rather special but unusual event. The people here are watching their granny's ashes being blasted into the sky. Her family say she was slightly eccentric with a great sense of humour. It was her stated wish that her ashes be placed in a rocket and blasted heavenwards. This was the event itself. Bye, Granny! Yes, uh, Granny's gone to a better place. Next door's garden. <laughs> Well, here is the related fact, then, for David's team. Mick Jagger has been asked by a company if they can sell his ashes in collectible egg timers when he dies. <laughs> they offered Mick Jagger, and it seems too good an opportunity to waste, Mick Jagger, they offered... Uh, That's good. They, uh, it's not up there with my Ronnie Corbett. I'm not going to say for a second that it is, but it was worth an airing. But what would Ronnie Corbett sound like if he was singing a Mick Jagger song? Yeah. <laughs> good on <laughs> Good on I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> an <laughs> it was an Australian. <laughs> Don't try and look like you were pleased to be asked. <laughs> All right, on we go. Um, an Australian novelty firm called Trend Connection, they were the ones, they offered Mick Jagger £20 million for his ashes. And the plan was for a share of the profits to go back to Mick Jagger's estate. On top of the £20 million? Pounds. Oh, oh, does he get the £20 million? Pounds he gets it now. Now, before yeah. dying, and yes. then they just sort of hang around with some paraffin and, and the... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, these things were going to be... They, they asked Jagger's permission to market small portions of his ashes in collectible hourglasses, costing a million dollars each. Mm. I mean, I know his dignity has not always been that man's priority. But even for him, it is quite undignified to have your remains spread around the houses of a lot of vulgar millionaires and using it to time their breakfast. <laughs> so, so what are you going to say, then? Uh, what do you think, Kelvin? Uh, I think it's so ridiculous, it must be true. Kelvin's been better at the guessing than me, so I think we should go with Kelvin. Um, so we're going to go with true? You're saying it's true. All right. Uh, well, let me tell you this. It is true. <laughs> Mick Jagger has 
has been asked by a company if they can sell his ashes in collectible egg timers when he dies. Actually, Mick doesn't want to be cremated, he wants to decompose naturally, a process Keith Richards started 30 years ago. <laughs> Which means at the end of that round, it's Lee in the lead with three points to two. is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Terry. <laughs> so, uh, Kelvin, what is Terry to you? Uh, well, this is Terry, and he built the nuclear bunker in my garden. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, David? Uh, this is Terry, and he's the policeman who was called out when I was caught trying to break in through the window of my own flat. <laughs> All right. And Jack? Uh, this is Terry, uh, the mean machine Fraser, and he is teaching me to wrestle. <laughs> right. <laughs> So there we have it. Please, team, where on earth do you begin? Yeah. Calvin, how many people can fit in this bunker? I bet it's just one, you selfish get. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, love. <laughs> Four at a push. So, Ke why do you push. feel... <laughs> <laughs> so why do you want one in the first place? It, it's a dangerous world out there, and I, I, want to, I want to be protected, and I want to protect those closest to yeah. me. If there's a nuclear war, I don't want to live. Neither do I. I'm with you. I, I don't want to come out of a shelter and try and rebuild society. And find Kelvin no, McKenzie I, I, skipping yeah, around I, saying I'm in charge. I have no skills. But, I mean, how long? OK, society is destroyed by nuclear war. How long? And this basically, we're back to the Bronze Age. How long is it going to be before people start pitching panel shows again? <laughs> it's going to be at least 2,000 years. <laughs> I'd love to see you in a Mad Max type of society. As everyone's, as everyone's holding off a biker gang and you're going, I can think of an amusing reason why one of yeah. these four might be the odd one out. Yeah. So, Calvin, there's four people can fit in this bunker. Yep. So you only have three people in the world that you care about. That is true. So there's us two, <laughs> and who else? <laughs> Ronnie Corbett. Um... <laughs> We can live for another 20 years at the world's shittest party. <laughs> OK, Jack, and why are you learning how to wrestle? Cos I'm a big wrestling fan. I've always liked wrestling. I went what, what kind of see, wrestling? Uh, like, WWE. Uh, I went to WWE? See WWE, yeah, World Wrestling Entertainment. Oh, I thought it was I WWF. See, oh, it's they changed now. to change now. it cos the World Wildlife Fund sued them. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not a joke, that's why they had to change yeah. it. Is that true? Yeah. 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 Do you really like yeah. it? Yeah, I do. I saw a man who was like seven foot four in little spandex undies when I felt alive. <laughs> Amazing. How long have you been learning for? Uh, I've done one lesson, but I'm going to do some more. I've done one one lesson. lesson? It was really good. What are you learning for, though? Just because you want to be able to wrestle? Yeah, I want to be able to wrestle. I want to have many things. Who studies this as a martial art? So you see all the posters, right? Taekwondo, karate, judo, whatever. I'm going to go and learn how to wrestle like a big pretend American. <laughs> Jack, can you tell us the name of five famous wrestlers? Uh, the Rock, Hulk Hogan, The Hulk Undertaker. Hogan. <laughs> Go on. Uh, uh, Shelton Benjamin. Oh, that's this... not, that's a bloody yeah. solicitor's. No. <laughs> Benjamin. Benjamin is a wrestler. Is it? Don't, yes. Please don't tell me that you've accidentally been represented in law. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> All right, David, uh, remind us again. Uh, this is Terry, the policeman, who was called out when I was caught trying to break into the window of my own flat. Do we, do we believe that, Christine? I can believe you were trying to break into your own flat for whatever bizarre reason, but I'm but not to, so sure to about... To live there, to continue to live there. <laughs> I locked myself out when I, I had a plumber round trying to unblock a uh, drain. I and find it difficult to imagine you holding a conversation with a plumber yeah. as he did the job. Did you actually speak to him in your house? Yes. Did you have a glove puppet on? <laughs> ah, little David is very pleased with your work. So, so would you, you like your, a cup of tea, so your little genuine, David? Your, your genuine view of me is I would be unable to converse. With yes. I would have to yeah, create unbelievable. another character. Yeah. So, <laughs> please excuse my mute friend. <laughs> 
He's, you can't say a thing, can you? Anyway, I'm in charge. That sink no longer functions. Silence, you! Now, you've not covered how the police got involved in, in this whole... Uh... A policeman, a Terry, turned up, and I think had been called by a neighbour. All right, so, look, we, we, we need an answer. So, uh, so, Lee's team. Is Terry Kelvin's bunker builder, David's investigating officer, or Jack's wrestling teacher? The only thing that's true about any of this is that I do believe that Jack might be into wrestling. <laughs> I reckon it's got to be Kelvin. He seems like the sort of paranoid nutcase <laughs> that might have too much time on his hands. At the minute, I'm going to go with Kelvin. I think okay. he might be telling the truth. Yeah, really? Well, I'll go with my team then and say that... Yeah. You're saying it's Kelvin? Yeah. Okay, Kelvin's right. Now, nice. Terry, would you like to reveal the true identity? I'm Terry Fraser. I'm the meme machine, and I talk Jack. <laughs> as as for a Machine Fraser is teaching Jack to wrestle. Now, show us together what on, you can up. do. This... I'm ready for this, bro. I'm ready for this. I'm ready. This show gets more and more like the Generation game. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is the basic slam. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Hey, whoa! <laughs> oh, oh. That's fine, Terry. Frankie, you're no longer the scariest person on the show. Are you OK? I, yeah, I think sure? so. Seriously. I've done one lesson. I'm not very good. So I'm... Well, I'll, just tell you what, I'll be honest, you didn't win. Yeah. Wait, can, I just, can I just ask, during the lesson, did you get the impression that you were annoying, Terry? <laughs> So, at the end of that round, David's team are three points and Lee's team have three. <laughs> which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but against the clock. Now, the scores are tied, so there's everything to play for. We start with... Mm. Uh, it's Lee. If you give me any date before the year 2000, I can instantly tell you what day of the week it was. Bollocks. <laughs> Is this something you learn, or is this the kind of, you know, Rain Man type thing? No, no, I had to, I, well, I had to learn... You learned how to do it? Learn the system. What's, what's, what's the, the system? system? The system is, uh, what you do is you actually just learn... <laughs> you learn one... You learn there trying to think of a system. And what you're clamping for is, you, you actually just learn what day of the week every day is. I can't go back to, like... 14 BC, right? <laughs> right. But I can, I can do it right the way back to the sort of 1920s, 1930s. <laughs> and what you do is you learn a midway, so you learn the 19... You learn one particular pit point in 1955, three months in 1955, you learn it off by heart those 90 days, and then there's a calculation that you can do to plus what or minus. It? What's that calculation? Take a day, one of them, your, you know, your expert period, the, My, around Suez or whenever it yes. was. Well, you have to give me the exact year, otherwise it'll be too well, different okay, I, I don't mind. Right, the 14th of May, 1955... Well, hang on, 14th of May. <laughs> Tuesday. 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 Right. And so, how do you extrapolate from your knowledge of that to go back to the 1920s to the 23rd of June 1927? It's dead simple. Yep. It's seven. Hang on. To the power of two. <laughs> then you take away 10%. Unless right. it's a leap year. And is it a leap year, 1955? Uh, of course not, you idiot. I was 54. And what about... Uh, so ni yeah, no, of course. Okay. This, one year, this one's so year that is 55 a leap year. Absolutely <laughs> crazy. Did you hear that? What an idiot. So, uh, well, he's not to be educated. <laughs> what a... Nine years a leap year, seven to the power of two. Seven to the power of two is 49. Minus 10%, 10 is 4.9, so you've got seven, 44.1. Correct. I was going to say... Well, that's, that's not a day of the week, that's 44.1. I haven't 40 done it yet. Point it is. 44.1, you Then you round it up Thursday. or round it down, which is 44. 44, key of the door, 21, 2 and 1 is 3, Sunday's the first day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So, David, you, you think it's true? I think it's true. I, it's it's a lie. I, I, think, I, think it's, I think it's clever. I think it's true. There's an easy way to find out. We all know what day of the week we were born on, well, most of us do. And if you tell me what day your date of birth is, I'll tell you the day of the week you were born on. Okay, for, 14th of July, 1974. Is that your birthday? Yeah. 
You were born on a Thursday. <laughs> I do. Looking at the demographic. <laughs> Look at the demographic of this audience. This will be a shock. 22, 10, 46. BC. 46. <laughs> Do you know the day of the week you were born? No. Good. Well, that's Andy. Thursday. <laughs> lie. You just did. <laughs> You're saying it's a lie. OK, Lee, are you telling a lie? Of course I'm telling a lie. Oh. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Next. <clears throat> Christine. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a Coronation Street star once made me remove all the red M&Ms from a bowl for him. Which Coronation Street star? My mum watches this, so I'm good. Adam Rickett. Adam Rickett. <laughs> well, I should tell you that, that Adam Rickett played Gail Tilsley's son. There we are. Mm. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, that's really for me. <laughs> Didn't he? He uh, went to Canada or he went off, didn't he? I don't watch Carrick? it, my darling. Oh, okay. They just told me. So, Adam <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's... I've never worked with such a bunch of snobs in my life. <laughs> in what context did you meet him? I met him um, when he was a guest on a show in BBC Northern Ireland. So, uh, what were you doing on the show? I was working um, behind the scenes, which is what I used to do. What, what as? A floor manager. You did make the move from being a studio manager to in front of the screen, didn't you? Yep. Yes. She hasn't made the move to being in front of the screen. That would just be annoying, wouldn't it? She's, <laughs> she's in front of the screen and going, Christine, love, would you get out of the way, please? <laughs> uh, what do you think? Lie. And you? Go on, no, what do you think? I think it's a lie. Oh, well, there are. Well, my views don't count, though, do they? Well, yes. Thanks very much. You're saying lie. OK, Christine, uh, true or lie? It is actually true. Uh, <laughs> so how did, um, did this request uh, come through to you? What, what did he say? Well, you see, we get rider lists, as, as it's called, and for our sort of big names. What's on your rider list? This is when I'm on tour. Flapjacks, raspberries, a Diet Coke, Two still mineral waters, grapes and blueberries. Rock and roll, Rob. Rock and roll. <laughs> you don't look like this without a bit of effort. <laughs> <laughs> what a very particular list of things. Yes. Well, that's why it's a list, Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> What's on your ride? Right? Six cans of better and a knife. <laughs> Yeah, six cans of better for a teetotal alcoholic. Why <laughs> <laughs> are you Frankie yeah. Boyle could complain about the fact <laughs> I said bitter and not mention the knife? <laughs> Take the knife or don't accuse me of drinking. <laughs> and that noise means only one thing. It is the end of the show and I can reveal that David's team have five and in what we call a tie, Lee's team have five. <laughs> but of course... <laughs> It's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week this week is Kelvin McKenzie. It's Kelvin's biggest award since Elton John's £1 million damages against him in 1987. Good night.